this, he had to call me and still held my hands. And he said, and he prayed over me. You will forever have my respect, sir. Because while you prayed over me, and something came on me. You asked me when I came in, he said, you have your scriptures ready now. Instead of me preparing, I was panicking and crying to God. And my wife said, somebody will see you and think, look at this. He said, but they will know you are just a baby. So I have come here just to release a few things that the Lord has dropped in my heart just as I was there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know, at the time, the disciples of Jesus, there's a scripture there. He said, behold their threatenings in the book of Acts. Behold their threatenings. That means they were threatened. So they had to, they didn't know what to do. He said, behold their threatenings. We can't speak because of their threatenings. Now what do we do? He said, grant us boldness. Amen? Grant us boldness. Now our prayer is going to be prayer of grant us boldness. Boldness to do what? Boldness to take this land. Boldness to take the United Kingdom. Amen? 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 Because he's alive. When you know he's alive, you stay bold. When you know he's alive, Job said, I, I heard about you being preached. He said, my ears heard. When Apostle Arome was preaching, he said, my ears heard. He said, but now, my eyes see. Because my eyes have seen, no more fear. Boss, let's come. They said to Jeremiah, I said, look, you cannot, don't mention the name of the Lord again. Amen? But what happened? Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord is shot up in my bones. Like fire. Because of that, I cannot keep quiet. Even if I want to hide, even if I want to shut my mouth, because of the fire, I cannot do that. Because this fire is shot up in my bones. Amen? Fire has been released upon us. Fire to take the nation. Now listen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we pray, before I came to the United Kingdom, I heard of men like Smith Wigglesworth, John Knox, John Wesley, Charles Spurgeon. And you heard of, about the man who had um, the orphanage in Bristol. A great man like that. Then you come here and you are thinking, ah, this is not what I heard about. What has happened? Nehemiah was in the palace. Nehemiah was serving wine to the king. Meaning that before the king will take anything, Nehemiah would have to take it first to see if there was poison or if there was anything that would kill the king. If Nehemiah was alive, that means the thing was safe for the king to take. Amen? Now, they now brought a message to him. Now, I'm sure I'm holding the microphone wrongly. Like I said, it's the second time. Amen? But, listen, they now brought a message to Nehemiah. Say the walls of Jerusalem have fallen down. The walls have been broken down. Ah! Nehemiah didn't get into prayer first. The pain of that ah, is like you looking at your father's house that you left in Delta State, Nigeria, and you came here. Now somebody has taken it, taken over. What? You've taken it from the country where my father was buried, been taken over. But some miscreants, and you want to get them out. Nehemiah went to the Lord. He cried first. He cried. After crying, then he rose up. He said, we must do something. Amen? Now, the people that will do something in the United Kingdom, the people that will do something in England, in Scotland, they are here. The fire is there now. The fire is there now. Now we are going to pray. Lord, he said, do you lack wisdom? This is James chapter 1. If you lack wisdom, he said, ask. And the one who gives to you liberally, who does not hold back, will give you. The wisdom, the formula, the tactics, the strategy to take this nation is what we are praying for. Amen? We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. This prayer is not for everybody. It is for those that really have pain in their hearts. Now, you know my wife, Laura, you know this brother Luke and all of this. These people of this color. And you see how, 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 how beautiful they look. 
and you see but how lost they are going to hell a land that some men labored for John Wesley said look I am standing now on my father's tomb since you don't want to want me to preach and in that place people were coming to him how are the people coming he said set yourself on fire the world will come and watch you burn amen that's what we're going to do if it is in your heart if there is pain in your heart have you cried before I cry I, 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 I cry I cry we, we, we traveled the other day we got to Redding I saw it in the church but nothing is happening in the church they've taken over it when I see things like that mm, ah, ah, God something must happen this prayer you are going to pray is if you have that passion in your heart if you have that pain if it has been a concern in your heart that this nation that this must change that this kingdom we must take it over again we are not going to have free medicine dominate we are not going to have illuminati dominate we are not going to have darkness dominate you are here to shift darkness open your mouth and begin to pray now baptize me baptize me baptize me with the boldness to preach your words the boldness to proclaim the good news Trying to look for the scripture that says, A lion who turneth not away for any. I thought it was Psalm 30 30. The lion, he does not turn back to any animal, he doesn't run away. The boldness of a lion, it is not faith you even need right now. You have the faith, amen. You have faith, but the boldness is lacking. Thank you, sir. You have the faith. You know the word. But the boldness is, not, is what is not there. The boldness will speak. How am I going to face these people? With my accent? With my looks? With this? And you consider all of all those things and the devil is laughing. He's trying to stop you. But we are praying. Where is that scripture? The lion that turneth not his back to any. Proverbs 30 30. Hallelujah. You are going to pray. Baptize me, oh God. From this conference. Have you not heard? He said they were, he said they were with him. And the evidence that was they were with him was clear. By the time they left there, they said, I know this one before. I know him before. We lived in the same estate. He said, but he went somewhere. He came back. They said the man of God was coming from one place that is not probably the map called Makodi. He said, when he came back, it is evidence that something has happened. It is clear. Evidence that they have been with Jesus. Amen. It is clear that they have been with Jesus. We are going to pray. As we leave this conference today, amen, let it be clear that I have been with Jesus. Let it be clear that I have been with Jesus. Begin to pray. Let it be clear. Let it be clear that I have dwelt with him. Let it be clear that I have encountered him. Let it be clear that he touched me. Let it be clear that something happened. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My wife, Laura, grew up in a place called St. Auburn's. A place that most of you would know in, in London, in, in England. These were men that laid their lives down. The gospel of Jesus. The love in their hearts. They were ready to be slain. To be it cost them their life. A lot of them. They were thrown they were fed to animals. They were set on fire. In fact, there was one of them I read about. When they were about, they kept asking him, are you going to change your mind? And he said, no. Are you going to change your mind? They said, no. They set him ablaze. And the, the entire community 
was watching. It cost them that much to hand it over to you. It is your turn. That is what I have made up my mind. You know, there was a prayer I used to pray. Then when I saw that it was disturbing my wife, then I stopped. I still pray it all, but she doesn't know. It's in Hebrews. It says some of them were son asunder. Well, Hebrews 11, is it 30? We look at it quickly. So when my time is up, you just give me a sign. Hallelujah. Stay in the spirit. Keep charging yourself up, don't. I told you I didn't really. Okay. Hebrews 11, 13. These all died in faith. But having received the promises, but having not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Amen? Okay. Now the next verse. 14. I didn't know they showed it here. Okay. For they that say such things, declare plainly that they seek a country. 15. And truly, if they have been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Next. But now, they desire a better country. That is an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he had prepared for them a city. Next. I, I just want to go to that place. I said, some of them were son and sonder. They were, this, this happened to them. But they held on to what they believed. They died. So even dying for what they believe is still faith. 37. Thank you, sir. 37. So I will wake up and I will be playing this. And I found out a song that was done by Sean Bowles. Uh, yes, Ray Bowles. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. So I will be playing that song over and over and over. Then I'm reading this scripture. And, 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 and I'm, I'm quite dramatic by nature. So when I'm at home, I'm a bit dramatic. I'm not saying, they were stoned. This is only me. Oh, with her. They were stoned. They were son asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Ah, so I am, I am, I'm reading this and I'm singing. I pledge allegiance to the Lord with all my heart. So look, my wife called me one day. Do you remember love? He said, do you want to die? He said, if, what, what would it be like if I die now? He said, because the way you are reading this scripture every time and singing this song, and you will be declaring, only you will be declaring, doesn't matter what happened, we will take this gospel. If anything, it will cost us. Ah! He said, don't be saying that. I used to say, I said, it doesn't matter. If they throw us in the prison, this gospel, we will not, we will preach it. So she called me and stopped me. Uh, but she only stopped it from coming out to her hearing. So I, I, I still prayed it. I was still praying it. We are going to pray that nothing will stop you from proclaiming the goodness of Jesus Christ. That every limitation, the things that you look at and you say, ah, because of this, because of that, let me hold back. My job, my whatever, that nothing will stop me. One more scripture before we, before we pray that prayer. Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Acts chapter 1 verse 3. Hallelujah. Are you still in the spirit? Oh, Acts 1 3. To whom also he showed himself alive. We are not going to take the rest. Just that. If he has shown himself alive in you, if you have seen him, as Job said, I heard before, but now my eyes have seen. Do you know the disciples also said it? He said, how can we stop saying those things 
that we have heard, seen, and handled. Are you going to stop me? No way. If he's alive in you, if you have seen him alive, if you have seen him alive, you cannot stop talking about him. So you are going to pray. Father, Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus because he's alive. Reveal him. Give me a revelation of Jesus. And I can't with Jesus being alive. Not the dead Christ. Not the dead Jesus. But the resurrected, the living Jesus. Reveal him to me. May my eyes see him alive. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Kasako tobe kokobaya. Masasa vokotobe likotobe.